Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from AlexMercedCoder.com and welcome to the final video. In this video, we're gonna talk about deploying the application. <clears throat> so we've created a basic, very basic to-do application. Hopefully yours looks a lot different than this and hopefully better. This, again, this is just to show you how to work. But what I wanna do first, before we go to deploy, I wanna get rid of this outline. So while I can toggle it here, I wanna make sure that when people go visit the site, they don't see the outline all the time. So I'm just gonna to go to our CSS file. It should be this one right here. And I'm going to get rid of the outline. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to put this on another line and just comment out this line. There we go. <clears throat> and in most text editors, you can comment things out and uncomment them by just hitting control backslash. So I can that. Cool. So let's save that, and let me just refresh, just make sure that it all looks the way I expect it to look. Do one final test of the application, let's log in. Okay, so I can log in. It lists me my to-dos, and each of them having an edit. So if I want to create another to-do, I can go down here. Again, this looks horrible um, because, again, this is just a tutorial. I didn't really spend too much time on styling, not doing a tutorial on styling. But title, let's just make another one. So I click that. Now I have two to-dos, each of them with their own edit area. Let's make sure I can edit the to-do. So and I got to change the text on that button. Edit, edit. Okay, and then there we go. See that 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 to do was edited. Cool. And then let's make sure I can delete. Oh, well, I didn't actually create a delete button. Oh yeah, the to do completed button. So this to do is completed. That should get rid of it. Yep, and I'm down just to one to do. And then I can log out. And just one test before I go fix that button. Let's see if I create a new user, make sure that, I, that the new user cannot see the to-dos of the other user. Okay. Ideal world, I'd create some sort of way that you would know that you signed up successfully, but like a confirmation page, but we won't worry about that right now. Test two, log in. And when I log into this account, it has no to-dos. So basically any to-dos are unique to the user. So this app's for the most part functioning. Again, not pretty. There could be some other better UX, UI elements added to it to make it a better user experience. But the point is the creation of it that teaches sort of how all these pieces fit together. So let me just fix that button because that's gonna drive me nuts. And that's I think on main EJS, yep. And edit to-do, we wanna change this to edit to do save that and now what we want to do so here's my server I want to deploy this so open a new tab so what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a Heroku account okay so let's head over to Heroku and and a Heroku account is free, and for the most part, as long as your website isn't getting like huge amounts of traffic, you can pretty much use it for free. You will have to put in a credit card on your account after you've uh, deployed five projects, just so that way, in case any of your projects ever do suddenly become super popular, they're not like stiffed. But you can deploy five projects without a credit card for free, and it's a pretty cool service. Now, I wouldn't use this like the free a free de uh, deployment for like production because the way it works is I see how these say like Z these are all different things I've deployed that means that server's asleep so when I access that it's going to take a little while to open up because so for example this is better box D this is a group project I did for general assembly which is was a, a fun project to do but if I were to go open up the app it's going to take a while to open up the app the reason being is that since it's asleep Heroku has to spin the server back up um, and get it going. Now, after that, long as 
it gets accessed within a half hour, the server will stay up. But if for some reason, no one goes to the website for half an hour, which is going to be basically any of your practice projects, um, it will put the server back to sleep. Okay, and this was just sort of like a little movie social network we did. Okay, it was a good time. Very, very cool project. Okay, but we're going to be creating a new one. So the point is, you want to log in. Um, now, how do we add a project? So you're going to install the Heroku CLI on your machine. So you will, you can just kind of search that in Heroku and find out where to download this, this, the, the command line tools. You could do some of it from here, but you're really going to need the command line tools eventually. Let me make this smaller. There we go. So what I'm going to want to do is one, I'm going to type in Heroku login. That's going to log in my command line to Heroku. So it's going to give it a second. It's going to tell me to push a button. Okay, press any key. It's going to open it up in the browser. So Chrome should be kicking in in a second. There it goes. I click the login button. It notices I'm already logged in and then tells my command line, hey, Alex, you're logged in. So now you're logged into your Heroku account from your command line. Now I'm going to be creating, first, I need a Git repository in this application. So first, let me actually, so if you don't have Git installed on your computer, if you're using Linux like I am right now, Git's automatically installed on your computer, so you don't have to worry about that. But if not, you want to make sure you have Git on your machine, which Git is just for keeping track of like software versions. And it's pretty cool. And if you don't know how to use Git, you really should learn how to use Git. But once installed, I just need to create the Git repository. So I'm going to say Git init. There it goes, initialized a Git repository. And then I need to commit. Because basically what happens, what you got to think about Git is imagine like there's three areas. So like imagine you have your table <clears throat> or your desk where you're creating work. Okay. And then you have like a billboard where you're going to take a look at all the work where you're posting the work as you do it before you post it in like a final binder, um, for it to be sort of committed as your permanent record. So basically right now, nothing, everything is on my desk. I've been working on it, but it's not on that billboard to take a look at yet. So I got to add it to that. So like if I type get status, everything's red. That means none of it's kind of on that billboard to be looked at. So I need to add it. So if I type git add dot, it just adds everything that hasn't been added. Okay. But before I even do that, I want to make sure my, I have a file called dot git ignore, which should be in your boilerplate. And I want to make sure that my dot env file does not get added because I don't want to give people my dot env file that has all my personal variables that I don't want other people knowing. And then you don't need the node modules folder. Those dependencies will just be reinstalled once it gets wherever it's going. In this case, Heroku. How do they know what to download? Well, they're gonna look in your package.json file. So that's why you wanna make sure that all your dependencies are listed in your .json file, which again, if you download the boilerplate, all that stuff is kind of pretty much set and configured for you. You don't have to worry about it. Cool. So now I wanna add all that stuff. And it's going to know to ignore the stuff that's in my dot get ignore. So I click get add. It's doing its thing. It's adding, it's adding, it's figuring it out there. Now, if I go to get status now, see, it shows that we've added all these files to what's called your staging area. Think of that as like the billboard. Okay. Can I see the bottom bottom? Hmm. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So I go down here. So now I want to commit those changes that are on my billboard into that binder and finalize it. So what I have to do is do git commit. I'm gonna put a dash M because if you don't do a dash M, it makes you go through all these extra steps. Don't worry about it. So dash M and then I'm gonna put quotation marks. I'm going to say, hey, this is my first commit. You can put whatever message you want because you're going to be the cool thing about Git is going to allow you to see all the different times you've committed your code. So you can see all the different versions of your code. 
And then on top of it, like if for some reason you really like botch up your code, you can actually revert back to one of your previous commits. So you don't like, you're not stuck with a bunch of code and like, oh, there's no way for me to walk back. So you should always be committing, committing fairly regularly. So this is my first, this is my first commit. Okay. And I committed it. Let me just go back to the top of this commit. So you can see the other information puts in there. I should be ignoring all that, but that's fine. I'm not going to worry about it too much right now. So let me just take a look at my dot get ignore again, make sure that I formatted that correctly. Dot node modules and the Oh, I put dot node modules. That should be slash node modules. Like that. That's why it's not ignoring it. So I do recommend fixing that. Okay, hopefully you didn't commit already. It's not a big deal, but it just means it's going to take longer for it to upload to Heroku. Okay, so that's committed. Get, so we did all that. It's in there. I'm not going to worry too much about it. My .env file was properly ignored, and that's what matters. Cool. So now that I have the Git repository in there, I've committed, now I need to create the Heroku project. So I'm going to type in Heroku create, and this tells Heroku to create a new project for me. Look in the Git repository um, that I have in that folder and add a remote to it. A remote is basically somewhere where I can push my code to, so that way I can store my code somewhere else. Okay, so Git, you can have a remote repository. So I have my local repository, which is what we're, is on our computer, but then I can store copies of it somewhere else, like GitHub. So the way it works is that once you have a remote set up, which it automatically sets for you, like I think you can actually take a look at the list of remotes by setting Git remote. Yep, so I have one remote called Heroku. If I were to suddenly also push my code to GitHub, there'd probably be another uh, remote called Origin. And right now this is the you, the name of my project, damp reaches 78024, it just gives you like a random name. You can change that in your Heroku account. But now I need to push the code to Heroku. Now before I do that, I want to make sure certain things are in place. One, I need to make sure that I have a few files here. That I have this app.json file that's set, that basically has several settings already set up for Heroku. So you can go in there, change anything you need to change, like what's your repository, the name of the project, all that kind of stuff. I want to make sure I have this proc file, which just should pretty much be configured for you already. You do not need to change this. It just basically says when Heroku gets your code, what should be the first command that it runs. So it's going to spin up a web server and it'll kick up that server by running the code node index.js. Not nodemon, because we're not going to be restarting the server all the time. We don't need to be watching for changes. And then the problem is I'm not sending my .env file. We're not going to look at that. So how is it going to know what my environment variables are for things like the, the database URL and all that stuff? I need to give, I need to configure environment variables on Heroku. So that's our next step. Okay. And the way you do that is you type Heroku config. So I'm configuring colon set. So I'm going to set a variable and then I would just type in, you know, sample that's the name of the variable equals hello okay and it'll tell me if I do it successfully so see setting example and restarting so now sample equals hello and if I'm not sure if I said it right I can just type in um, Heroku config and this should list all my variables for me there we go so we can see all our environmental variables so I need to make sure that I set up any environmental variables that I need. So I'm going to pause this for a second, set those up and you should set yours up now too. Okay. So I set my configure, my, my environment variables and I cleared my terminal. So that way you can't see what they are. Cause it does show, show you in the con confirmation that they were submitted. So once you've done that, all that, we should be good to go. So then the next step would be to type in git push, which means I'm going to push my code to a remote repository. Now the remote repository I'm going to use is my Heroku remote repository. So Heroku, so git push Heroku, and then you're pushing a branch. We don't know what branches are yet. If, you, if you're if you new to uh, Git, just know that generally, if you whatever website is going to Heroku is going to show is whatever's on your master branch. It's your default branch. 
basically what branches do is that if you wanted to, you could create several branches. Like if you wanted to kind of go like an experimental direction and you didn't want to mess with your code where as it stands now, you can create a branch, edit it. And if you're just not happy with how the branch turned out, you don't have to go revert back to a previous commit. You can just switch back to the main branch and be like, well, I guess that didn't work out. Or if it does work, then you can merge that branch into your master. But the idea is you're always, your master branch is your production branch. So we need to push our master branch to Heroku. So git push Heroku master. So I'm pushing to my Heroku remote, the master branch. That's what, how that reads. So if I do that, it starts, well, counting how many files there are. It's gonna start uploading the files and then Heroku's gonna realize, oh, you've deployed. So we need to run your server and then we'll see if there's any errors or anything. I don't think, I think we, everything should be working. So let's give it a second. Oh, something went wrong. Let's see here. Error failed to push some refs to HTTP get Heroku. Push rejected, damn, uh, push rejected. We're sorry, this build is failing. We can troubleshoot, let's see where it went wrong. Solving, installing dependencies, pre-build decayed node modules already exist. We're building any native modules. Yeah, this this is that whole bcrypt thing I was telling you about. Remember I mentioned that there might be an issue with bcrypt when you deploy the Heroku. That seems to be the problem. So what is the solution? Okay. The solution is this. Okay. You're going to go to your... Well, we have to basically change our dependencies. So let's do that first. Okay, so we'll come back to Heroku. So first what we're going to do is we're going to uninstall bcrypt. So git, not git npm because it's node package manager we're using node and it's going to uninstall bcrypt okay npm uninstall bcrypt and that's going to try to uninstall it it may do it successfully or not we'll find out if not then there's another way you can uninstall it but let's see here it's going to start uninstalling it because we're going to do is we're going to uninstall bcrypt because and, and we're going to install bcrypt.js. And the big difference is that bcrypt gives you like the raw source code for bcrypt, which then gets compiled like real time. So that's always was where the problem comes in with Node, is that it just has a trouble compiling it here and there as new versions come out. While bcrypt.js, it's already pre-compiled, so you don't have to worry about that. But it's not necessarily always the newest version of bcrypt, that, the downside. But see, and so it's giving me that problem. So what I am going to do, though, is first I'm going to install npm install bcrypt.js. So first I'll install the new library. <laughs> okay. For some reason I always run into issues with bcrypt when it comes to deploying the Heroku and trying to uninstall it, but you're gonna learn the workaround because I've been through these growing pains before. Sometimes it works fine. And you know, if it works fine, I generally prefer to use bcrypt because you get the newest version but so there bcrypt.js is successfully installed so now what do I do I'm gonna go to my package JSON okay and I am going to find bcrypt and delete it from my list of dependencies so now see how bcrypt.js was added because we successfully installed it so it does that automatically for you so I'm gonna delete that which fine, that it's no longer on my dependencies list, so I should be fine at least regarding Heroku. But right now it's still hanging out in this node modules folder. And I accidentally committed that before, so I really rather get rid of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete the node modules folder, which just basically deletes all my dependencies. But it's not a big deal, because they're still listed in my package.json, so it'll go back and get them all. But before I do that, I wanna commit and then the git ignore was fixed, so I shouldn't try to do it again. So I'm gonna just do git add. Let's see, and then git commit dash m changes. Nothing major. You generally want to put more descriptive commit messages, um, so that way you can kind of tell what you did during each commit. Okay, so it's committing. It's gonna take a second because it's thinking I got rid of all those node module folders. Good, okay, it's doing it, it's doing it. But essentially once that gets done, then we're gonna re-download all our dependencies. 
which I don't need to sit there and type in npm install this and npm install that because it's in my package JSON. So it's going to know what to download automatically, which is really useful. Mm -hmm. This is taking its time, but I guess it is. There we go. Yep. Cool. So now with that, now we'll install. Let's check my dot get ignore one more time. Just make sure that's all good. So that it doesn't get pushed up again dot git ignore slash node modules good because you want to slash because it's a folder I'm saying ignore this folder don't commit it to my git repository okay and then this dot env file saying don't add that file to my git repository so I'm going to type in npm install and that's it what it's going to do is going to look for your package json file take a look at the list of dependencies and then just install all those dependencies so whenever a project gets really funky and something just everything stops working and you're not sure which one of your dependencies it is, you can just always just reinstall all of them by hitting npm install and deleting your node modules folder. And then if you have a problem uninstalling something, you can delete it from your package JSON and just reinstall your node modules folder. Okay. Node is good like that. Okay, so see it's still downloading everything good. Okay, so everything is downloaded. Goody. Um Okay, I should be able to just push to Heroku now. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before we do that, I forgot we have to change our dependency. So we have now bcrypt.js installed, but I need to make sure that my code realizes this. So I need to go to my index.js where bcrypt is. And then just literally keep the code exactly the same, except that to change this to JS. Literally, that's the only change you have to make. That's the great thing about bcrypt.js. The change isn't huge. Um, and then I think we also have it in the user controller. Not the, not the model, user controller. So that'd be at the top. And there it is, bcrypt.js. Because the only thing we're encrypting is the username and password. So that's all good. I do need to commit those changes. So git, I'm gonna git add those changes, git commit dash m, added bcrypt.js, good, now we can git push Heroku master. And let's see if it works now. Okay, it's doing its thing. And it's loading, it's loading, it's loading, it's loading. It's doing its thing. It's gonna take a second. But then technically the, the website should be working. We should be able to go now go create our username. And since we're, we were already connected to our database, we were using our actual production database from the get-go because we connected to Mongo Atlas, I should be able to just log in with the username I've already created because it's pulling from the same database and the same collection. So this should be pretty much working right out of the box. But I'm gonna give it a second. These deploys can take a bit, especially when you made a bunch of changes versus the last commit. And that's gonna have to download all those dependencies and whatnot. Do 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 do. No JS detected. Creating runtime environment. Good. Installing binaries. That's taking care of things. So far, so good. I'm not seeing any errors. Okay. Build succeeded. Good. Proc file declares types. Web compressing. Release v5. Verifying deploy. Yep. And successful. Okay. Let's, we don't see any errors. So we are good to go. So let's copy the URL here. And then put it in our browser. And make sure we can access the website. Do, 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 do. And there it is. There's your to do app. 
Now let's see if I can log in. Test. Test. And there's that to-do already. And I'll say to-do completed. And once again, the to-do's gone. I create another to-do. There it is. So the app is functioning. Again, could be prettier, but you guys get the point. So hopefully this gave you a good idea of how to kind of create an application with Express. So now go take that app that you started, try out different models, uh, build out something fancy, enjoy yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to head over to alexmercedcoder.com. And sign up for that dev networking Slack. Okay. Follow me on Medium. Follow me and subscribe to me on YouTube. Follow me on LinkedIn, GitHub. You know, just follow what I'm doing. I'm doing cool stuff. And check out some of my other apps that I've created here. And explore. It's a cool website. Good times. See you guys later on. Have a great one. Enjoy.